Welcome back folks. My name is Rebecca Ricks and I'm here with the Homeschool Connection and we are doing our five minute teaching tips. So let me go ahead and set my timer here. And today we are going to be talking about bright futures. What is it? How you get it? What you can do with it? All things bright futures. So here we go. So what is bright futures? Well, in Florida, it is our scholarship. Um, and grant program. If you re reach certain requirements, you're going to receive money for college. And right now, um, there's two different levels, but I think I read it was about $250 a credit hour that you get um, for qualifying for Bright Futures. So how do you qualify? Well, it's kind of a three-step process. You have to complete a certain number of community service hours, um, and it's like a, about 100 community service hours to reach the top tier level. Second thing you have to do is you have to score a certain SAT or ACT score. In my opinion, this is the hardest thing um, because if you are not a great, great test taker, you do have to, to reach the highest level, you have to have a very high SAT or ACT score. Um, this, the third thing you need to do is you need to have maintained an unweighted GPA, an unweighted GPA of 3.5. So a 4.0 would be straight A. So a 3.5 is about straight A's and it needs to be an unweighted GPA. Um, that's basically the, and the last thing is there are certain classes you have to take to qualify. So you need to take your four English, your four math, your three history, your three science. You're going to have to include two years of a world language, which is not required for, um, um, which is not required to graduate from Florida in high school, but it is required for Bright Futures. There's actually two different levels. Um, one you need to have a 3.5 and one you need to have a 3.0. So um, they've, they've kind of leveled it so that there's two different steps, um, full scholarship and then partial, which kind of makes it nice because sometimes you work really, you know, these kids work really hard in high school and they're missing it because of some criteria so they can get a partial scholarship also. Let me interject here while I'm thinking about it. If you ever go on to apply for Bright Futures or apply for any scholarship and they're asking you to pay, you're not on the right, the right website page. Um, that has become more and more um, prevalent, um, but no, it is a free website and I will put it in the comments so that you can see it and see what it is. Um, so make sure the other thing is you kind of want to work on your hundred hours of community service. So you want to start that. I mean, really, if you think about it, that's 25 hours a year. Um, if you start in ninth grade, work on your community service, work on your GPA and different things like that. So, um, now the thing is, once you get your bright futures, when you are in college, you also must maintain a certain GPA, okay? So you can withdraw from classes, but after they've paid for that class, it comes out of it, all right? So to maintain bright futures in college, you must maintain a 3.0. So you just can't go into college, get bright futures, and then kind of squander it um, in order to keep it. They, you must maintain a, say, the GPA um, by doing it. And then they can also put it as full-time, part-time. There's a couple different things you can do with that, but it's not, um, those requirements are pretty much it. You know, but if you're already hitting a 3.5 in high school or you're hitting those harder classes, then it's probably easier for you main, to maintain it in, um, in, in college. You know, it's easier for you to maintain it. So that's what it's kind of for. And it's really, um, an advantage to us um, if you you know if you can't pay for college you can earn it by working really hard in high school and so just kind of remember um, it'll pay almost everything a full ride if you get your your top tier of bright futures so there's the Florida academic scholars and the Florida medallion scholars the top tier is your Florida academic scholars that's the one that's going to cost that's going to be a hundred hours um it's going to be a uh, hundred hours of community service it's going to be the little bit higher gpa and higher sat and act scores the second one the florida medallion scholars only requires 75 hours um, and only requires a 3.0 gpa and it has a little bit lower on your sat and act score so you have to remember um, you've got to really work hard on those um, to get up there to where you need them to be. 
Um, so we're talking like top tier. Um, if you need it, um, required score is going to be up in your higher uh, 20s for that. So the, um, the newer standards have just come out. So just kind of think that when you're trying to take your SAT and ACT, that's what we're kind of aiming for. Um, and um, there we go. There's my timer. That's my five minutes. So hopefully that answered a few questions about what Bright Futures is. If you have any more questions, tag it below and I'll be sure to answer it and kind of give you some more information on where to look and what to get for that. So don't forget we're enrolling for classes. If you have any questions on anything Florida homeschooling, let us know. And uh, don't forget you're not alone. We are here to help you.